how to control color and even composition with just one tool. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Here's another video about Control.net and today we're going to talk about T2IA color. I found almost no information about this method online, but it's super powerful, so let's get started. So of course the first thing that is important here is how to install that. I have a video here on how to install Control.net 1.1 and just in case you need to download the model and the YAML file, I want to show you in this video where to do that. So first we're going to go to this link, both of the links are below this video and here you can see that we have the T2IA adapter for color SD14 version 1. Here you want to click on that arrow to download that and then also on a second page we have have the YAML file that is necessary. So again go to that link and here in the list you can see the T2i adapter color SD14 version 1. You want to download this into the automatic 1111 folder, in there into the extensions folder, in there into the control net folder and in there of course into the models folder so that everything sits here in this folder. Then we go back to automatic 1111 down here for control net and for the preprocessor you click here on the pop down menu you want to scroll down and look for T2IA color grid and then for the model over here you want to again scroll down and look in the list here for the T2I adapter color SD14 version 1. It's important that you search for the 14 version 1 because this is the same as the YAML file we have otherwise not going to work so click on that and now the cool thing is in here you can load any kind of image, AI image, photo or something you have created yourself. And creating it yourself is actually the magical part here because this allows you to have a certain control over the composition. So let's create something together. So here I have an image of a landscape and a sunset. So I'm right clicking and copy this because I don't need a high resolution. Then I'm going over to an image editor. I'm using Affinity Photo 2 but you can use GIMP or any kind of online tool that allows you to work with multiple layers. We are going to paste the image in here and then move it around until we are happy with our composition, for example like this. Now I want to create another pixel layer where I want to draw a character. Don't worry, you don't have to be able to draw just very rough shapes. So here on the right side we click on the icon to add a new pixel layer and then on the left side we are going to select our paintbrush tool. Then again on the right side we have here our swatches tab. If you don't see the swatches tab, you want to go to window up here in the menu and here you have swatches, click so you have a check mark and this will open the swatches window. So for that what I want to create here is a character with red pants and a yellow raincoat. So I'm selecting red here as the color and I'm just drawing a red line in here, maybe make it a little bit bigger and then I select a bright yellow and again I'm drawing in here a yellow line and that's already enough for us. Now I also want to create a hat in here so I'm clicking up here on the yellow color, double click, this will open up my color chooser. I have a color wheel here, if you also want to have that, here is a pop down menu, select the color wheel. I find that this is the easiest way to select colors. From that we're going to select orange as the tone and then a bright orange tone because bright orange is actually what most skin colors look like and then of course darker oranges for darker skin tones. It's not pink as we have been told in school. So with that color selected simply make a dot over here for the head. That's all we need to do. Now I want to point out here that this method for the composition works because I have a high contrast in the colors between my character and the background. If you have similar colors the AI will not be able to differentiate between the background and your character and this is not going to work. So this has certain limitations. So let's go here to file and export 
save it as a JPEG. Now we come back in here for control net, click here to load the image. You can also click here on allow preview and then click on this little explosion icon to get a little preview of what you have and you can see it's really very rough. You can turn on pixel perfect and of course you also need to enable control net. Now we scroll up and want to set the prompt a negative prompt. Of course you still need to describe the scene. So here I'm writing cute smiling woman freckles wearing a yellow raincoat wearing red pants standing in a Canadian mountain valley pink sunset facing the viewer. Let's click on generate. And as you can see here, we get a pretty cool image that has exactly the colors that we have provided. Now if you think, well, this doesn't look so good, the face is all wrong, don't worry, because this is just a small version. Here's how to get really nice quality. Click down here on send to image to image. Then scroll down to the resize so in my case, I'm going to set this up to 1024 by 1536. For the denoise strength, I'm going to lower this between 0.15 and 0.25. And as you can see here, now we have a really awesome quality. And here on the screen, you can see some other images that compare the input with the output. So you can see this works with all kinds of colors. You can create really amazing things. Let me know in the comments what you think about this method. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.